fucking dumb cunt. Hey, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 165 of the podcast. I just recorded for 15 minutes without pre- pressing go. Dumb cunt. All right. Uh, uh, whatever I just said, it was great, but, you know, you missed it. I was there for it. Best 15 minutes of my life. Let's see if I can make up for it. I'm going to have to just not say any of that shit again because it'll be weird and robotic. Uh, I Okay, here's what I can talk about. I look incredible. I look so fucking good. Your boy's got a new haircut and there's something special about me as well, which I'm going to get into. Before I do that, I'm feeling amazing because Melbourne, I'm officially uh, announcing that the I've locked in the Melbourne Comedy Festival. Uh, I have a room. It's COVID safe. Uh, we are locked in. We've signed contracts. We're ready to go. Pre-sale opens Thursday. Now, uh, they're COVID safe. That means you cannot do big shows. The last few shows I did were like a thousand people, over a thousand people. Not so this time. All right, COVID safe means small venues. It's about 100, right? So I'm doing 23 shows. That sounds like a lot. But because they're COVID safe, if you want a weekend show, they literally will go, right? Last time I did I did like uh, like something stupid like 1200 or so tickets over on a Friday and a Saturday. Now, across the 23 nights, there's only going to be about 4 4 to to 600 like actual weekend tickets. So, if you want to come see me on a weekend, you must buy them in pre-sale. Loosebeers.com slash gig list. Don't be the cunt that fucking is disorganized and waits and then complains to me. Oh, they're sold out. They will sell out really fucking fast, okay? Don't say I didn't warn you. Loosebeers.com slash gig list. Patreon supporters get it even before earlier before that. I'll post about it in there. Um... But yeah, if you're a podcast listener from Melbourne, I highly recommend you jump on the gig list because uh, that is the only way you can really guarantee yourself a weekend seat is if you act fast. And even then, to put in perspective, I have uh, about three or four times the amount of people on my Melbourne mailing list than I do tickets available because of this COVID safe thing. They're going to be amazing shows. They're going to be nice and intimate. I'll be able to really, really put on a brilliant show. The venue is an actual comedy club that is being built for the festival. So it's going to be fucking killer. We're filming every single show. Uh, uh, They're not going to be gigantic shows like I have done at the Comics Lounge or in Brisbane. They're going to be super cool, super fun. There's enough people to put on an incredible night. And what's really cool about it is that means that we won't have to rush the meet and greet. I'll probably I'll have time to to talk to a couple couple of you cunts uh, instead of going hi, thank you, bye. Uh, it'll be really cool, very cool hangout space uh, that I've booked, and uh, the stage and everything looks amazing. And I cannot wait to get back on stage and fucking perform for you. So. Pre-sale is this Thursday. Get on loosebeers.com slash gig list, enter Melbourne, enter your email address properly, and uh, I will send you an email Thursday morning. Organize your friends. If you're if there's only one of your mates on the mailing list, no worries. One person can buy as many tickets as they need, but you must, especially if you're the type of person who wants to see it on a Friday or a Saturday night, I highly encourage you to book it in pre-sale. If you do not, you are fucked. All right? With that being said, I cannot wait for the shows. It's going to be incredible. I got the I got the whole thing planned out. We're filming every single show. It's going to be crazy. And with real talks going as well as they are, man, those shows are going to fucking fill up. So I want to see you there, and I want you to grab your tickets first because you podcast cunts are the most hardcore. So don't uh, end up regretting it. Book your fucking tickets now, okay? Um, I look great, right? I I am almost. I am this close to achieving my goal look, which is having no blue hair. I'm sorry if you can hear any fan noise. It's uh, I'm in Australia. It's hot, all right? I'm in Australia. It's hot. I'm in a fucking garage wearing jeans. It's hot. It's a studio, but it used to be a garage. We haven't installed the studio air conditioning, okay? All I have is a fucking fan and, uh, and the sun. That's what I'm competing with. I'm under hot lights. This sucks, bro. Please come and see my show so I can get the fuck out of here. Um, I've, I'm almost at no blue, all right? If you look, I got no blue on the sides. Zero blue detected. It's, it's incredible. I only have blue on top. I reckon one more haircut and it's over. It's done. It is gone. And then I can finally go back to normal. I am never doing that shit again. Ever. I've said it many times before. I will never, 
ever dye my hair for money. No, it's not fucking happen. I'm, I'm just not doing it. It was not worth it. Twitch takes 50% anyway. Fucking Twitch made as much money as I did. They didn't have to dye their fucking hair. They didn't change their logo color to blue, did they? I just had to look like a fucking moron. I looked like an idiot with blue hair and then it started to grow out and it looked even worse. And now I'm, I'm left with this. If you look at my Real Talk videos that I've started dropping on Instagram, my hair is like gray. That's not what it looks like in real life. In real life, it looks more like what you're seeing now. But when I use the green screen, it like deletes all of the green and it just kind of goes gray, like this weird, strained gray color. And the, my, the color of my face is fucked in some of those videos because we actually have to make the color grading worse so that my hair doesn't disappear with the green screen. It's, it, is, it is objectively, like, for a person that does a lot of green screen work, objectively the worst thing I could have done with my hair. I'd rather be fucking bald. I'd rather fucking shave a swastika in my head than go blue again. Like, it is, it's the dumbest... I didn't realize. I had to fucking... I bought a green screen so I could stream with fucking three showers after I went blue. It just went green and then... It looked like I'd been fucking scalped. Like I had a forehead and then just nothing. No no top of the skull, just forehead and then just whatever was behind me. It is the worst fucking thing I've ever done in my life. I was down at the, the fucking duck park the other day on the weekend feeding the ducks, which I never do on the weekends because it's full of rats. Not animals, children. Other people's children. All these fucking rats running around scaring the ducks off. I'm trying to have a relaxing time by myself. And then I'm fucking feeding the ducks oats from a little Tupperware container. Yes, I'm 95. Fuck you. Yes, that's the most boring thing. What were you doing on a Saturday night? Overdosing? I'm feeding ducks. We're different people. You're not on my level. We don't connect. That's why I'm here and you're there because I feed ducks and you've no, I don't know. I don't know. Look, I'm I'm trying to make feeding ducks sound cool. It's not it's not going well. I'm sure you're having a lot more fun than me. But the point is, I'm on fucking it's like a Sunday morning. You know, I'm trying to have a relaxed Sunday morning. I, I went down to feed the ducks. It was nice weather. I take my fucking food down there. I start feeding the ducks. Unbeknownst to me, it's a massive giant park, right? So Often kids will just run from one end to the other. It's like, imagine your park, it's three times the size of that. So you can lose a kid. So all these fucking parents are on like, uh, they're on helicopter hover parent mode, but then every now and then they fucking open up their phone and they check what the price of Bitcoin and then they lose their kid. All right? Or whatever the fuck they're looking at. Cheating on their wife, whatever they're doing. They lose their kids. That's me. Don't do that. Is me when I'm a father. Hey, when I have a toddler, if I leave the house with it, I'm gonna have to leave. I'm gonna have to leave the phone at home. I'm gonna take the sim out and put it in a fucking Nokia brick because if I have my phone around the toddler, guess what? I I'm gonna know that. I'm gonna know exactly. I'm gonna know exactly what was trending on Twitter when my son gets hit by a bus because I wasn't watching. You know. Like, I'll know that I'll, I'll be like, oh, fuck, Jake Paul wants to, wants to fight Conor McGregor. Oh, my God, he's dead. Like, that is how it's going to go. If I leave the house with my son and a phone, I'm going to remember what's trending that day on Twitter till the day I die, you know? And it's going to be something fucked. Some non... Some... Like, you know what it'll be? It'll be like another Minecraft YouTuber gets done for messaging 15 year olds and i'll look at it again and i'll be like i oh, you know that sucks but it, it's also not very surprising and oh my god like that's you know what am i saying i'm at the park yeah and uh i'm feeding the ducks trying to trying to be by myself i i i am really it might not seem like it because what i do and, and my job and everything I'm a, I'm a big introvert. I like, uh, I love being by myself and being around people, other people in a social setting fucking exhausts me. Uh, so I went out for the Luke and Lewis 
Christmas party, which was in January. It's kind of my birthday party as well. Um, and then the next day, I wake up and I see Jazz and I go, oh, another person. I don't want to talk to us. So I go to the fucking park to hang out with the ducks. All I want to do is be left alone. Feeding the ducks. There's no kids anywhere. And then all of a sudden, one little girl runs over to me. She notices that I'm feeding the ducks and she's got like a little popcorn bag. You know those popcorn fucking stripey bags that, that you would have popcorn in if you were in a cartoon, right? For some reason, we have boxes, but in cartoons, they have bags. I don't know what's so good about the bags, but it is what it is, right? She runs over to me and I'm, I'm like... I don't know this kid. She's like, what? Fucking, I don't know the age of children. Does anyone else know the age of children? She, she could have been four. She could have been 10. I don't know. Does anyone, is anybody else like that where I just, I never had a really younger sibling and I never had anyone with like uh, any close family members with really young kids. So I, I have no idea how to judge the age of a child. Like sometimes I'll I'll look at a like a like a like a Balinese adult woman and I'll be like, well, she could be nine, you know. Like I, I don't I just if 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 they're under five foot, they could be thirty, they could be six. I don't really know. I've never been able to judge the age of children for as long as I've been alive. Even Jasmine's like younger brother, who who that's the only kid that I've like watched grow up from like a from like a just a little bit older than a toddler to like, uh, he's in high school now. It's the only cunt I've watched like grow up and I got no idea how old he is. He could be 10, he could be 40. I don't really know, you know? Because I, he came into my life when I was like 18, 19. By then, you know, my brain had just decided that anyone that looked younger than me was like five, you know? So this chick, she could be, she could have been, a look, in my uneducated opinion, she may have been seven. But, like, what does a seven-year-old look like? Does anyone know? Does anyone know what a seven-year-old look looks like? If you if you know exactly what a seven-year-old looks like and you don't have one, bit sus. I will say, bit sus. You know, like, I think that is actually the way that I operate. That's the correct way for someone who doesn't have children to operate. Because if you can, if you can look at a child as a man, for a woman it's different because I don't know because that sounds true. All right, that's my new logic for anything. It's like, oh, where'd you hear that? I don't know. It sounds true though. For a man, if you if you don't have children or you don't have like a lot of younger siblings, you know, like a very that very different younger siblings. If you're an adult male and you can look at a child under fifteen and immediately identify their age, sus. I will say that, sus as fuck. You know, it's suspicious. And I think the reason I, I think the reason that is true is mainstream media, all these Netflix TV shows, American Hollywood shit in general, movies, TV, Disney shows, right? All of this fucking media that we consume has completely destroyed our idea of what someone should look like at their actual age. I was watching fucking Queen's Gambit on Netflix, the show about chess that doesn't have any fucking chess in it. And then that 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 weird looking bitch, you know that, that chick who has the eyes so far apart she could be those fucking weird sick looking fish in an aquarium? You know her? She's supposed to be, in, in real life, she's like, uh, how old is this woman? She's very, I know I may just made fun of her face, but she's very pretty. How, how old is she in real life? And then, and then I'm going to fucking blow your mind and tell you how old she's supposed to be in the series. Queen's Gambit, actress, age. Where is this fucking chick? Yeah, okay, so... In the Queen's Gambit, the woman who plays the main character, she's 24 years old and she's playing a 17-year-old girl. I think at moments she was supposed to be even younger than 17. I think there was a few time skips, but I couldn't grasp how old or young this 
chick was supposed to be in the series because the bitch playing her is fucking 24 years old. I looked at her and I was like, she looks kind of like my age. And then one of the characters just mentions that she's 17. I was like, what the fuck is going on? How is this bitch fucking supposed to be seven? Cast a 17 year old for fuck's sake. Why are all these 25? It's like it's like the mini, minimum age you have to be in Hollywood to pay, to play a 16-year-old is like 27. You guys seen American Pie? All of those all those cunts are like they look they look fucking 33 and on steroids. They're playing 17-year-old kids. When I saw that film when I was actually almost their age, I thought it was based in in like a university. And I thought it was about a bunch of mature age students that never grew up. That's fucking based in high school. All these like Hollywood actors are like 27 playing 15 year old people. It's like, what the fuck is going on? No matter, no wonder when I look at an actual child, I can't determine their age. Cause I think every, every 15 year old is supposed to look 35. It's insane. And then in the fucking Queen's Gambit show, she has a friend who's like another chess prodigy. I looked up his actor. He, the cunt is 30 in real life. I looked up other fucking roles he's played. The dude's been playing like teenage characters for 15 years, literally. The cunt's 30. He's a good actor, but for fuck's sake, could you give a kid a chance? Now every time I look at a fucking nine-year-old, I don't know if they're like a they're, they're like some thirty-two-year-old actor or if they're actually nine. All these TV series have completely warped our perception of age. I turned twenty-seven. Cunts on TikTok were telling me "rest in peace," calling me old. I'm not fucking old. I could just I'm I'm the perfect age to play a fifteen-year-old. You fuck. I'm about to get cast in a high school drama. You little cunt. 27, that's young as, according to every director in Hollywood. Although reading a lot of the stories, I would much rather have 25-year-olds playing teenagers than actual children, because then at least the 25-year-old can, can consent when they get fucked by the director. <laughs> I honestly think that is why... People think like late twenties is old. It's not old. And that's young as fuck. My body works. My mind is sharp. This is like peak physical fitness. This isn't even halfway. If I was an athlete, I would be in my prime prime. Like I would have just finished becoming an adult. Really is what 27 is. It's like you, you're at actually really truly finished growing and being an adult. Like it's not fucking old. It's not young I actually I would say that it is it's not super young but it's like it's youth I think that youth is anything from fucking you know you're a child from whatever to 18 and then I think adult or like young is the same thing young is to me is like from 18 to like 35 or so Dep it, I think I think when you hit your 30s your youth does depend on your physical fitness, you know? Because I've seen a few, like, millionaire actors that really look after their bodies in their 30s. Like, obviously, this cunt who's still playing 17-year-olds when he's 30, he's young. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's young. He's 30, but he's young. If you look at him, you're like, that guy's young. But then you see, you know, a couple of other, like, 30-year-old, 30 like, chicks who've been going a bit too hard on the burgers and Coke, and you're like, yeah, she's old, actually. On, on on paper she's she's kind of young but like on the inside that's she's crumbling you know like all those like like those those uh those dudes who who have just been punching darts since they hit 15 you're like that guy is like he's 28 but that cunt's old you know what i mean i'm doing great i always, i always th and i i thought that at like 15 i never thought like I would look at my older cousins who were like in their late twenties and I never saw them as old. Something's shifted where like like fifteen year olds think like in your twenties is like you're a senior. It's like can't there's so much left to go. It's a really weird way of looking at life. If you think like 
20, like people, I remember when I turned like 22, people were like, oh, you're old. 22, 23, pe- that's when people first started saying it. I was like, dude, I'm fucking 22. I like literally just kind of went full time with comedy. I, it's, it's just starting for me. This is young as fuck. I never understood it. Like, that's such a scary way of looking at life if you think 20s is old. Like, fuck. What about the other 60 years minimum for our gen? If you live a normal life that we have. Fuck, man. I think old, literally, honestly, I think old starts at 70. I don't think, as long as you look after your body, if you're 50, I don't consider you old. I think you're like a older, but when I think old, am I the only person? I think like fucking 70. Minimum. I don't know. Thank you very much for, for all the birthday wishes, by the way. I forgot to mention it in the last episode. I'm, I'm 27. I turned 27 on uh, January 16th. I had a wonderful birthday. Um, it was really great. I got to do stuff. We, we went out. Uh, I went out for my birthday. I'll finish the fucking Duck Park story another time. I'll finish at the end of the podcast, all right? Sorry. I've, got, I've gotten away from it now. I've been yelling about age, and now I'm here. So welcome, everyone. Haven't even told you why I'm looking good. Dude, this podcast is full of good shit. Have you got your fucking tickets yet? Um, what am I saying? Oh, yes. Uh, it was my birthday. I had a lovely fucking birthday. Um, as a, uh, In comparison to my last birthday, which I think I may have been on the regional tour. Or it was a, it was, I don't know. I don't think I had a very good birthday last year. I'm not a big birthday guy, usually. I've never really had... It's kind of stressful when it's your own birthday. I, I organized one birthday for myself, like as an adult, when I was 21, and I didn't really like it. It was lovely having people there and the speeches were nice, but like the the party was like stressful. I didn't, li- I didn't like it. Because I have friends from like a lot of different walks of life. I've got my comedy friends... I've got my high school friends, I've got my nerdy gamer friends, and I have my criminal friends. And they, and and neither of those mesh. You know, like my high school friends, they don't really get along with my nerdy friends. My comedy friends, they will talk to the criminal friends, but ultimately they're a little bit scared of them. The nerdy people don't want to talk to anyone, and the criminal friends are like, where's the drugs? And... And it's my birthday party, so the answer is not here. So it, it's very stressful organizing your own birthday. But what I did do was I went out with the Luke and Lewis team. That was lovely. Uh, went out to – we went bowling at Strike Bowling, had some drinks, went to a bar. Uh, then I went home, and they all went to the strip club with their girlfriends, which is – I'm not sure if it's, it's appropriate, but, but I also – think it's kind of funny and that's how I run my business it's like oh well if you know if that violates several HR laws at least it was funny you know <laughs> you know like like workplace bullying is discouraged unless you have a really good zinger in which case say it in front of everyone and we'll put it on Instagram you know what I mean like that's kind of the vibe here no we have a great we've got a great team we love everyone here um and then for my actual birthday I was like, you know what? I've spent every single night, every single breakfast, every single morning, lunch and dinner, every single one of them for pretty much an entire year at home. I didn't go to a restaurant. I didn't go to a cafe for probably like eight to ten months, literally because there's all this COVID stuff. So I thought, it's my fucking birthday. I'm going to Nobu. I'm, I'm going to Nobu. I'm going to one of those fuck off expensive restaurants. I've never done it in my life. I love Japanese food. I've probably saved fucking billions of dollars, if you agree with the Herald Sun on their opinion of the cost of smashed avo. I've saved literally billions of dollars. The entire economy of Namibia is in my bank account because I didn't get smashed avocado for about eight months. I, You know, I actually own 
a significant chunk of Amazon. Not all of it, but like 31%. Because every time I wanted to get smashed Avo and the cafe was closed because of Corona, I just put the amount of money it costs to buy some smashed Avo from a cafe, which is about 36 million. I put that in my bank account and I saved it and then I started buying chunks of Amazon. And now I'm a, I'm a billionaire. I'm a billionaire. I'm going to start lobbying the government to make tax a crime. Not, not paying tax, I mean charging tax a crime. Uh, and uh, to allow racial and uh, gender discrimination within my own workplace only. Uh, and to outlaw seeing any comedian uh, from Melbourne who's been on the project. Those are my three kind of pillars. And I think that, you know, two of those are a little bit sucky depending on who you are, but that one about the project benefits us all. <laughs> that benefits the world. <laughs> what was that? To oh, yeah, so decided to go to Nobu, right, which is very expensive, but I saved up for it. I wanted It was like our first night out, um, and I had saved, like, so much money from not leaving the fucking house at all for a year, I thought, you know what? Let's make our first dinner out. It's a birthday thing. Let's make it a fucking special one. So we went to Nobu at Crown and dear God, uh, Jazz and I have just never, ever done anything like that. Any type of luxury dining experience in our lives. And you could fucking tell from the minute we left the house, right? I make reservations for quite late because I was working that day and I thought, oh, maybe we'll do something else afterwards, right? Quite late. We get dressed up in, in the, you know, nice outfits and everything. We get dressed up. Jazz does their makeup, all that kind of stuff. Beautiful. I'm ready. In 15 minutes, she takes, I think it was 60 days uh, that I was counting. I marked it on the calendar. calendar. She started getting ready in December she wasn't ready until until January. That's kind of how it went. So we were late, right? We're like, we'll leave it this time. But she had to start getting ready in fucking December. So, of course, we left about an hour after we said we were going to leave, which was about 40 minutes before we were supposed to, whatever. We leave late. And now we're panicking. Because there's a, there's a, if you go to a place that charges like, hundreds of dollars for food and you don't show up, there's a hefty cancellation fee, right? Which obviously I don't want to pay, but it's my birthday and I don't want to ruin the night, so I'm playing it cool. That's something that I'm very good at. I don't get annoyed by things ever unless they're tiny things that don't matter. I think the amount, the, the, the tiny amount I care about things that I should care about the effort that it's that it's taken me to let those things slide off my back like water off a duck's back. To let that shit slide, I reckon that water goes somewhere. You know? Like when the Melbourne Comedy Festival got cancelled. That was terrible. Awful. Horrific. Put me in debt. Cost me a lot of money. Had to refund everyone. Bad. But I didn't like get angry. I didn't like freak out. I didn't... Go, no, oh, no, it didn't ruin my day. And I think it probably should have because now if I'm like looking for a pen and I can't find one, I might throw the cat into the ceiling fan. So I reckon that water goes somewhere and it, and it, and it decides to like congregate in the pen that I can't fucking find because I need to write down something. So we're running late. And I'll continue the story. Uh, this is this. Re I really am in peak Spearhead Sunday's form of just fucking tangents. Hey, it's just tangent after tangent after tangent. But you're not allowed to complain. Not allowed to complain. What's the deal with airline peanuts? Sorry, I went a bit Jerry Seinfeld there. You're not allowed to complain because I'm deviating here. Something very, very fucking important. And that is the official sponsor of the show, Manscaped.com. Manscaped, shave your pubes right, okay? They've sent me some uh, 
some Valentine's Day copy. Now, this is going to get you guys really... Before I read the copy, I'll say what I think. They're great. Really good. I use the Manscaped thing all the time. Shave my nuts. It doesn't nick me. Uh, I've never been nicked. Uh, I use it properly. Shaves my pubes. Gets rid of the mess. Looks nice. It's not too... It's not like really fucking short either, which I don't like. It's just like a nice... It's a nice length that keeps everything clean, makes everything look a little bit bigger, which is which is important for many for many of my listeners, as we all know. Uh, no, it's just good. It looks good. It looks cleaner. It is cleaner. Less sweaty, bro. Because when you shave it with a shaver, that's a fucking mistake. And when you use those, like... I went and I bought something that was twice the price of this Lawnmower 3.0 thing. That's the first one that I bought before this, and it cut me, and it's terrible. Twice the price, this one's better, all right? For half the price. And you know what else? Valentine's Day is upon us, fellas. Make sure you're ready for whatever the night may take, for wherever the night may take you. Our friends at Manscaped, it's in all caps. The global leaders in men's below the waist grooming are here to tell you that you need to use the best tools for the job so you can be ready for anything on that special day. That's right. You don't want to be showing up to the fucking Valentine's Day hotel with Chewbacca screaming out down there, you know, obscuring the beast. Unleash that cunt. Or, 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 or you know, you can say unleash that cunt if you're a lady listener. I think you could shave your box with this. Two million men are already trusting Manscaped products to groom. Make sure you're one of them. Do not read. Host talk about a time where he hurt his balls while manscaping or a funny manscaping story. Well, I already did that. I did do that. I've, I've done that. We'll check that off. Uh, your girl can't think of what to get you this year. Tell her what, tell her to get, tell her to get the gift that's for you and for her. How natural is this? To, would you just buy it? Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. Is that the fucking code? I need to check this. I'm pretty sure that it is. Code Spears. For fuck's sake. I'm pretty sure it's Code Spears. You guys really better fucking... Here we go. Yes. It's Code Spears. Uh, if that doesn't work, try Code Lose Spears. But do Spears. Yeah, it's Spears. Do that. Code Spears. 20% off and free shipping. For real. I didn't fuck around... I don't advertise shit that sucks or that I haven't used myself. Uh, the Manscaped stuff is really, really great, and they fund the show, um, which is the the last vestige of me saying cunt online. I had to get out of my YouTube, you know. I had to get out of Luke and Lewis, but here it lives, thanks to Manscaped. So shave you cunt, you cunt. Manscaped.com, use code SPEARS, 20% off, and free shipping, all right? Thank you very much. Now, we're going to Nobu. Fancy Japanese restaurant in Crown. Uh, we're running late. No worries. I, I don't care. I'm happy to be out of the house for once, right? So we're going to Crown. We missed the turnoff. Now, normally, I guess if you go to these places, you know where to enter in at fucking Crown. For some reason... Entering Crown, I reckon they make it hard. They have two different ways to get into Crown if you're parking. There's the VIP parking, which is so fucking easy. It says Crown parking. It doesn't say VIP. So we missed the turnoff that we were supposed to get into because there was no sign. The fucking parking for the plebs without the VIP membership has no sign. And there's no big crown fucking light that you think they want to advertise where they where you can park to get into the fucking place. But they only do that for their VIP. So we missed that. We go, oh, no worries. There's the crown one. We'll go in there. That's probably the only entrance. We go down there. It says crown, parking, the price. It's, it's reasonable, whatever. We go in. We get there. The fucking woman out the front goes, oh, this is VIP only. I go, what the fuck? Why doesn't it say VIP at the front? Why do you? Her job is literally just to tell you to fuck off if you're not a VIP. Make that a sign, you cunts. Why does that poor woman have to look every fucking broke loser in the face and say, you're not good enough to park here. Say that it's VIP. 
or take down the sign and make it equal. No signs anywhere. Let him figure it out, right? So whatever, we go, where is the pleb parking? And she looks at me and she looks at my girlfriend who's driving and she says, what I can only imagine is just the entire Melways. You remember that book that like had every street and every suburb in it? I reckon when I asked for directions for how to get into the pleb parking and crown, she looked at me and my girlfriend and started reading from page one because that bitch didn't stop telling us directions for about 45 fucking minutes. She goes, so you need to do a U-turn here. Then you go left and then you go left and then you go straight and you skip one and then you take the second left and then you turn right. And then there were a bunch more steps that I can only assume was the rest of the fucking Melways because I looked at her and I tried to memorize every fucking thing. Jazz, I've never seen more focused in her life trying to memorize this bitch. She's telling us the directions. She knows we're not taking it in. She's not fucking stupid. I can remember four things in a row and then I'm fucked. I'm lost. So we go, all right. And then we go away and Jazz goes, did you get any of that? And I go, I got straight, left, left, straight. Maybe right. And then she goes, yeah, that's all I have. But then there was six more steps. So I was like, look, just let's follow the first few that we do remember. And it should be obvious because they should want us to fucking park there. There should be signs. So we go, we take the directions. We get into the like this, there's like a crown complex that is a road and there's crown on either side. So I'm thinking, okay, well, we're, we're like in here. There's got to be a sign that says fucking park here. I need to calm down. We are now like, by the time we get to this, it's like five minutes before our reservation. If you don't know these fancy places, if they don't get a booking for you, there's almost always cunts lining up outside because people always miss their bookings. I imagine because it's impossible to park at fucking Crown, right? I would say that the way they have structured their parking lot is so much worse than the amount they have crippled so many families by getting them addicted to the pokies. Like, that's bad and that's terrible. But the parking situation, if we're thinking about what we're going to regulate first, it's got to be the multi-level parking of Crown. Put a sign there! All I want to do is eat sushi for $150, let me in, right? So anyway, it's like five minutes before our fucking time. And I'm like, oh, well, we're gonna lose it. We've done all this and we're gonna lose it. Jazz is like, I'm sorry, it's my fault I missed the turn off. And I'm like, no, it's fucking Crown's fault for not having a sign out there. And then, and then I wanted to say, also, you did take 6,000 years to do your hair. But I didn't say that because it was my birthday dinner and I didn't want to ruin it. But we were going to leave an hour earlier than we were going to leave if it were not for... But you can never say that to a woman because there's no reason. You just can't, okay? Anyway, we're now in, like, the thing. So I call the restaurant... And of course, the restaurant doesn't have a fucking number. It takes you to the Crown Directory. Hey, cunt, I know who I want to call. I want to call the restaurant. Make them pick up the phone. Like, why don't they have their own fucking number? I'm paying $150 for fish. Answer the phone. So I call. And I'm on hold for like 15 minutes while Jazz is frantically searching for a car park that has no sign out the front. I finally get through. Jazz finally makes it to some multi-level car park. We don't know where the fuck we are. It is Crown, but we don't know where the restaurant is because it's a maze, right? I get on the phone and she goes, who would you? I said, no, boo! And she goes, all right. And then I go, we're here. We're going to make it to our thing. 
please don't give away our table. And she goes, yep, we can do that. How far away are we? Are you? And I go, I'm not sure. She goes, where are you now? And I go, well, I'm in this car park. She goes, okay, so you're on the opposite side of Crown. I said, what the fuck? Anyway, so now we're fucking stressed because she goes, I'm going to, I'll tell them to hold it for you, but I can't make any promises. I'm like, great. So we get out of the car and it's a fucking race. And of course we didn't remember where we parked. So when we fucking had, when it was time to get back into the car, we had to like search for 30 minutes looking for the car. Cause we were too stressed. We didn't say, Oh, we're in green three or whatever the fuck it is. Okay. So we go through walking through crown problem gamblers and Asians who believe in luck everywhere. You know, those like Chinese ladies that like they 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 seem, they seem like, they should be at home. You know, it's like fucking... I remember one time I went to Crown and it was... I was there. If it was for a birthday thing, I was out there. We were out really late. We had dinner and then it was just like punting all night. I wasn't doing it. I'm very good at going to Crown and having a budget and not going over it. I was enjoying myself. We're there at 3 a.m. on like a Thursday morning and there's like Chinese ladies everywhere. And you look at them and you go, fuck, that is grim. They can't even, I don't know if they can even read the sign that says, do you need help? <laughs> right? So we're going through there, looking at all these ladies that are going to be there till, for six hours after we leave, searching for the place. And of course, there's a fucking maze. Every, every single corridor seems to lead to, you know, hot, more chili or whatever the fuck it is, the poker machines. We finally get there. And we go in and we sit down and we've made it. And it's and it is beautiful in there. But that's when I realize we're out of place. Because the only people who are in a fancy restaurant like Nobu, like those luxury high dining places in Crown. The, there's only two types of people and we weren't either. The first type are the people who should be there. The incredibly rich. The This Nobu is just another dinner type money. Like 150 to them is like five bucks to you or I. Like just the let's order off the menu based on what looks nice, not based off the prices. Like they go through the menu with their arm over the prices and they just pick whatever they want. Lobster caught today? No worries. I don't care what that costs. Those are the type of people who are supposed to be there. All right? And we're not them. The other type of people that go to Nobu are the animals. The people that shouldn't be there. Like they've won at Crown they started with 20 bucks and they worked their way up to, to $200 and they thought, fuck it, let's go to no Nobu. And they're, and the, the rich people are dressed beautifully. They're having a great time. They, they're regulars. They know the chef. The other guys are fucking animals. Jazz and I, we're not destitute animals, but we're not billionaires. We're somewhere in the middle. We're pretending... To be the billionaires, we're not there. And everyone knows it. We are cosplaying the rich this night, which I highly recommend you do. It was an amazing night out. If you can, it's expensive. My thing was, it's, you know, but for a treat, I'm not going to do it again for a year. But it was fucking good. But that's, I feel like that those are the only two types of people that should be there. Is the incredibly rich and people at least pretending. Jazz and I pretended. I wore my off-white sweater. I got it on sale. 60% off. They don't know that. They don't know I got a bargain on it. The point is, it looks expensive. Jazz is wearing some shit. She got it off ASOS, but who, no worries. She looks great. Looks a million bucks. We're trying. We're pretending. These other cunts, they show up in fucking... One dude was wearing a Rip Curl t-shirt. Would you fucking go to KFC, please? I'm not trying to be an elitist here. People who don't... Who aren't millionaires can have nice things, but they have to pretend. That's part of the fun, surely. 
If you're wearing a rip curl sh sh t shirt and shorts, they shouldn't let you in, cunt. Go to KFC. You know, there was one other couple like Jasmine and I that were like clearly not rich. They dressed nice, but you could just tell they were like us and it was a special occasion, all right? And that's great. Those are the only two types of people who should be in fancy restaurants. Millionaires and special occasion type people. Once in a year type shit. If you walk in there and you're wearing a fucking rip curl t-shirt, go to KFC, would ya? That being said, the, the fucking millionaire rich table, someone bought a fucking baby in. Excuse me. You're paying $150 a head, get a babysitter. <coughs> Have I been yelling for an hour? I think I have. I'm, I think that if you... Oh, I've lost my voice. I've lost my voice. This is my punishment for, for getting into a nice restaurant once and immediately trashing people with less money than me. That is my punishment, is losing my voice. God saw that and was like, yeah, shut that cunt up. <laughs> no, but you know what I'm saying? Pretend for a night. That's, that's, the, that's the fucking fun of it is pretending you are up there with them for one night and then going home to your shithole home in Frankston and going, that was a good... I, do you reckon we tricked them? We didn't, but it's fun to imagine we did. Oh, I got to plug my fucking computer in. Sorry. One second. All right. There's no way I was going to fucking... Imagine if I started this episode again. That's why I'm losing my voice. I yelled for 15 minutes before I started. Normally I'm done now. <sighs> anyway, right? So we go and enough trashing. Yeah, they, someone brought a baby. It's like, cunt, I'm looking at $150 salmon. I don't want to hear your fucking rat screaming. Get it out. Why would you bring it? Why the fuck would you bring an infant to Nobu? It's $150, cunt. Leave it at home. You can obviously afford a babysitter. If you can't, don't go to Nobu. I think that if I'm paying $150 for rice, if someone brings an infant in, it should be my right to tell the waiter to kill it in front of me and then cook it and, we can, and the whole restaurant eats it in front of the grieving mother. I think that's reasonable. I think that's the level of service I expect when I'm paying $150 for sushi. I think that's fair. I think, I mean, obviously all these, <laughs> all, all, if you listen to Alex Jones, the billionaires have already, already doing that. Why can't we? You know? <laughs> um, so anyway, it's like, we, I actually, for real, if you're in a position where you can treat yourself for one night, it was literally fucking incredible. I know I'm saying, oh, I'm paying 150 for rice. I always looked at those places and was like, ah, it can't be that good. And I'm not a foodie. You guys know this. I've said it many times. I don't like eating. I never have. I don't like, if, if I could take a pill and just never eat again, even for the purely for the enjoyment of it, I would take that 100%. I don't enjoy eating. It is something that I have to do that is in the way of other things I'd rather be doing. There's or people who love food. I don't understand you. I know that like, you know, oh, I have a bit of chocolate. That's nice. But like, or, you know, have like a, a good steak. Yeah, it's nice. I've never, but I've never gone, oh, fuck. Yeah. I really wanted it. I've, I've never in my life actually gone, oh, fuck. I really want to eat insert meal. Never really done it. I've gone, yeah, I have my favorites. I know things I like. I know things I don't like. But I've, And it's not because I've never had good food. I've had good food. I just don't enjoy the process of staying alive, eating, digesting. I don't like it. I don't not like it. I don't enjoy it. I think that's it's just a chore to me, right? It's like, you know, doing the dishwasher. I don't hate it, but it is annoying that I have to do it. You know, I don't like it. I don't hate it. It's like, ah, it's something I got to do. That's eating for me is a chore, right? I have 
I reckon Nobu was the first time I thoroughly enjoyed a meal in my life. And Jasmine, who's a big foodie, was like, I've never seen you like this. I always thought those, like, really expensive fucking eight course. We got an eight course thing. So it's like eight really small things. I always thought, oh, you just leave hungry. Full as fuck when we left. And it was every single thing I had was the best version of that thing I'd ever had. And there were a few things I'd never had in my life that blew my fucking mind. Bro, I had Peking duck for the first time in my life. I almost cried. It was the best shit, the best thing I have ever eaten in my life. In, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It was the best thing I've ever had in my fucking life. It was the first time I'd ever eaten food that truly made me go, oh my God. This is amazing. I've never done it before in my life until I had that fucking duck. There was Wagyu beef. Blew my mind. It was fucking incredible. Highly, literally worth every fucking dollar we spent. I'll think about that for months. I won't go back for months because it's fucking expensive, but, you know, it was great. Do it. I recommend it. If you can afford it, save up a bit of money. Take your girl, take your man, pretend to be rich for a day. I really think pretending to be rich for a day is some shit, is some nice shit. It's fun. I remember one time, I mean, this might be me being a sociopath, but one time when I was 18, I walked into a, a, one of those real estate agents that were building like a big apartment in Melbourne CBD. I told them I just sold my app. I want to see the penthouse. They took me up, they toured me around. Now, I was bored that day, but fuck, it was fun. Bit of sparkly water, no worries. Right this way, sir. You really want to pretend to be rich and you're young? Because that's the thing. It's very difficult to pretend to be rich when you're like under 25. 25, 30, it gets easy. The older you get, the easier it becomes because oh, he could be a business owner. He could have built himself up from nothing. He could be famous, an athlete, a YouTuber. Like, could be many different things when you're like 25 plus, right? When you're under that that bracket and you're in those environments, the staff are very suspicious of you. And the way to get around that, I've always found, is just tell them you're an app developer. Because that's what they always do. They go, what do you do? And if you say student, they go, fuck off. But if you just go, oh, I'm an app developer, they go, oh, this cunt has more money than I could ever even dream of. And you don't say that you've built a game. You don't say that you've done social media. You don't say you've sold an app. Or you, you don't say what type of app. You just go, I'm an app developer. And, you, and then you say nothing else. And you let their imagination go wild. And I highly recommend it. You know, going to a fancy wine tasting, going to a fucking fancy steak place. Anywhere that's like for rich people. And if you're playing along, playing the role that day, just go, I'm an app developer. And watch them lose their minds. It's great fun. I clearly had no idea how those fancy restaurants roll because the guy comes up to us, they seat Jazz and I, they give us fucking cloth napkins. Cloth nap Washable cloth napkins. la di da Gives it to me. I'm like, thank you. Sorry, he places it on the table. I grab it. He goes, I'll do it, sir. I'm like, what's this guy going to do? And he lays it on my lap. I go, wow. That's some unnecessary service. Never in my fucking life have I ever thought, oh, I need a, a napkin on my lap. That is some shit when you have $1,000 jeans on. Not when you got like black Levi's, you know? That's when you got your velvet Gucci pants. And if you drip a, a fucking... A, a milliliter of soy sauce on them. You got to replace them. That's some shit that you need a lapkin for. <laughs> a lapkin. Right? So they do that. And then he goes, uh, would you like to start off with some water for the table? And I go, yes. And he goes, would you like uh, tap water, sparkling water, or, and then I forget the third option. They had a third type of water. I don't know what the fuck type of water it was, but... These rich people are drinking it. 
I thought there was only tap or sparkling when you go to a restaurant. There's a third type of water. Did you guys know that? I didn't. I misheard him. They're wearing masks. I don't know what the third type of water is. I, I'm dying to know. That's what I can't stop thinking about. What is the third type of water? Adrenochrome water? What's in it? How's it different? So I go naively. I'm like, oh, it's a fancy night. I go sparkling water. And he goes, no worries, sir. I'll bring it right out. He brings out this bottle of sparkling water. We drink two throughout the whole thing. Just brings, we finish one. She goes, would you, like, would you like some more water? I said, absolutely. He brings out the bottle. Goes, this is fucking lovely. He goes, would you like a coffee? I thought, you know what? I don't really want a coffee, but I want to know what an ex like a $10 coffee is. Because it was 10 bucks. I'm like, I got to know. I'm here. I have to know. I am here. Right? So they bring us a coffee. I'm like, fuck. Amazing. We finish our $150 a head, mind you, meal. The best food I've ever eaten in my life. Worth every dollar. Incredible. You know, I, I budgeted for it. I pay myself $400 a week from the comedy money. And that, that that's my leisure cash. I can do what I like with. That's what I live off. That's how I buy my food. That's how I buy underwear if I need it. A comic book here and there. That's what I'm on. It's called jacket money. If I need a jacket every now and then, I can buy that shit. If I need a good jacket, I can save up a couple of weeks and get it. That's called budgeting. You don't just have all of your money and you put it in one account. You get all your money, you put it in one account, and then you pay yourself a weekly wage and you can blow that on whatever you want. And then you don't even have to worry about saving because you got your fun money and you don't even have the opportunity to save because it's already been done for you. That's a little savings tip from Spears. I used to be an absolute fucking retard, sorry Minecraft stands, with my money until I worked out that little trick. Saved my life, right? So I saved up a couple of weeks. I got $300 for one birthday dinner. No worries. Nice little birthday gift for Spears. We finish up. Lovely. Best food I've ever had. Worth every dollar. I go, at the at first, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to get $300 worth. Bro, I got $300 worth. It was incredible. Peking duck, I almost, I almost cried. Wagyu beef, incredible. That shit was so good that I had to Google whether or not Wagyu beef is ethical because I want to eat it again. Results, inconclusive. Can't figure it out, which is kind of what I like. Because now I can just believe what I want to believe instead of what I fear to be true. They're just fat cows, from what I can gather. They seem to be treated better than other cattle. It seems. I could be wrong. That could be literally Wagyu beef propaganda. Like, actually. Like the tobacco companies going, smoking is good for you. That could be Wagyu beef going, Wagyu beef is great for the cows. And then there's just some, like obese 10,000 kilo cow lying on the floor going, kill me. And the farmer going, not yet, not till you're worth enough. I don't know. Educate me in the comments. I'd for real like to know, is Wagyu beef ethical? Because if it is, gobble that shit up. Anyway, 300 bucks, no worries. We, we finish up, we have the dessert, incredible salted caramel fucking thing. I don't know what it is. We get the bill. Apparently, sparkling water costs $30 bottle <laughs> when you're at Nobu. I thought it was free. I'm a fucking idiot. I thought it was free. I thought they'd get out of a fucking tap. We had that at the radio station. How hard is that? They're getting out of a fucking tap. 60 bucks on fucking water, bro. Plus the coffees. And then we also had fucking mocktails because I thought, why not? Bro, I spent over $400. Dear God, that that I did not budget for. That hurt the wallet a little bit. That for me is a week's pay on dinner. That wasn't that wasn't in the plans. I re I nevertheless I don't regret going. But dear God, if you go to one of those fancy restaurants, would you fucking look at the prices of the other shit? The stuff like 150 for like eight courses of the best food in your life. It's not that crazy. You know what I mean? Considering the where you are, the atmosphere, the, the, the high-level chef, the skill, the service, it's not that crazy. But 
$27 on a bottle of water. That's where they make their fucking money. Be warned. Go there. Only get the food. Don't fuck around with any other shit. It was a, I mean, it was a good coffee, but fuck, man. So support me on Patreon if you like to fund my dining habits. No, for real. I don't use any of that money on dumb shit. That is strictly content money. Um, I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. Been going for about an hour. Uh, once again, thank you for the birthday wishes and uh, just really, really drilling into your minds. Sign up to the gig list, loosebeers.com slash gig list. Buy tickets in pre-sale. If you want a weekend show, if you're in Melbourne, they will sell out. This happened last year and people complained. This year, we have to deal with COVID restrictions. So it's less tickets by a lot. The demand is twice as high. I haven't toured, haven't done Melbourne Festival for fucking four years. I haven't done the festival for. So the demand is like insane from the last time I did it. But the tickets that I'm allowed to sell safely, way, 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 way less than cut in half than what I would normally do. So, this is to all my podcast people. You guys are the ones that like my shit the most. You guys are the ones that I care about the most. I want you guys to get the tickets. Get on the fucking mailing list. Organize your friends. Buy your tickets as soon as you get that email. I don't know what's going to happen, but I do think that some of these weekend shows are going to sell out during pre-sale. If I look at the numbers... And I see how many Fridays and Saturdays tickets are available. You know, I'm doing 23 shows, but only like a handful of those are weekends. So they will go. All right. Um, so don't be that fucking idiot who left it too late and go, oh, I didn't get tickets. That is your fault if you do that and you will miss out. And I will, I don't see myself doing shows in Melbourne after this. I see myself trying to figure out how to go to interstate and then maybe doing some regional stuff. Maybe, but I don't know. I'm not planning anything ahead. So this is all I have for you. If you're in Melbourne, this could be it for the year. I want to see you there. It's going to be amazing. We're filming every single show. Uh, I'm going to be busting out the best material I've written uh, over the last few years, and then also a bunch of new stuff that is crushing uh, some real dangerous tightrope stuff that you guys know I love performing. That's that real fucking, oh, can he pull it off? Uh, dark stuff. So if you want to see it, we're getting back in the trenches and I'm going to need my fucking army with me. All right. Loosebeers.com slash gig list. Get your tickets when you get the email. Thursday morning, check your fucking emails, your spam folders, everything, and buy them ASAP. I will see you there. Don't fuck this up. It's going to be a great night, all right? I'll talk to you next Sunday, and if you're a Patreon supporter, I will continue on with the Patreon podcast in a second. It's been posted right now. Have a shit one.